can you appreciate a particular mass ulcerative mass is seen so in the intestinal yes, type of adenocarcinoma you are going to see an elevated mass which is having a heaped up border can everyone appreciate this border has been heaped up okay border is going a border is somewhat going like this okay this is called as heaped up margin which is a characteristic of uh, you know uh, ulcer cancer okay and there is a central ulceration if you can see there is a mucosal defect that we can see okay so in the intestinal ulcers if you look at the gross image they are bulky you will see an exophytic mass which might be ulcerative infiltrative lesion with heaped up borders this is what we see in case of uh, intestinal type whereas in the diffuse variety you will not see any this is actually the tumor area okay not only this actually this tumor area is this actually if you see this area is completely flat can you appreciate there is no rugosity there is no rugosity over here present at all no rugosity is there it is completely flat there is no mass which is present over here okay you can appreciate just there is thickening just some area is showing thickening that is it you don't have any particular mass over here just the gastric wall is highly thickened and whatever mucosal folds were there th that is lost and there is no mass at all this is how a diffuse variety that is an intestinal type okay now in this intestinal type what we see that we see that the cells are going in the form of glands yes everyone will appreciate it yes the cells are growing in the form of glands so it will be like the tumor cells are growing in the form of glands okay these are the glands according to which the tumor cells are growing and the tumor cells are growing in a in a area showing excessive amount of fibrosis or we call it as desmoplastic stroma okay desmoplastic stroma that means that area has become very tough and very hard that is the meaning of a desmoplastic stroma is it clear to everyone yes is it clear to everyone yes yes so in case of intestinal type of adenocarcinoma you will see columnar gland forming cells infiltrating through a desmoplastic stroma this is what you see but in case of infiltrative or diffuse infiltrative tumors you are going to see some cells like this the cells are single they are not forming gland and the cells see they have fat over here and inside over here they contain mucin actually so there is no gland formation you will see single cells containing cytoplasm of mucin now remember i told you <coughs> that the cells normally they are of this shape and they are lined like this and they are held together by what is called as e cadherin okay now because of loss of function mutation in the cdh or e cadherin gene these cells become round like this can you appreciate can you appreciate now the cells have become round yes they become signet they become signet shaped they become signet shaped so they are loosely present okay they contain so so the nucleus has been shifted towards the periphery if you can appreciate yes everyone can appreciate this is the nucleus towards the periphery yes this is the nucleus and this is the cytoplasm which is containing cytoplasmic mucin vacuoles so this is the basic point of difference between the intention of today's lecture that is gastric carcinoma okay we are going to do both the topics together both of them are very very important topic this is also asked as an important long answer question okay let us see now the most important malignancy that involves the stomach is called as an adenocarcinoma so can anyone tell me what is an adenocarcinoma yes carcinoma of the glandular yes. structures very good so whenever cancer occurs in the form of a glandular thing we call it as adenocarcinoma okay and then see there are two types of cells na what are these cells <laughs> excuse me squamous yes, cells this yes, squamous cells so any tumor which is arising from there we call it as squamous cell carcinoma okay and for example we have certain epithelial tissues okay for example we have this uh, you know glands okay so this is our gland okay. so if any tumor is arising from the gland we call it as adenocarcinoma so these are the two important epithelial cancers which can involve any organ okay any organ can be involved by adenocarcinoma in this okay so remember adenocarcinoma is the most common malignancy of the stomach 
okay comprising more than 90% of all the gastric carcinoma okay now remember the most distal gastric adenocarcinoma that occurs in the gastric antrum this is the site of gastric carcinoma in the gastric antrum okay remember the lesser curvature is involved more than the greater curvature okay lesser curvature is involved more than the greater curvature okay so one very important point of fact is lesser curvature is also an important site of which type of peptic ulcer gastric gastric, gastric peptic ulcer and i had also told you that the gastric peptic ulcers are also uh, prone to conversion into malignancy although the risk is less than 1% but it is so now you can correlate yes everyone can correlate so the early sign symptoms of your gastric carcinoma is very similar to chronic gastritis and peptic ulcer disease that the patient might have epigastric pain the patient might have epigastric uh, you know pain then aching pain will be there night pains can be there nausea vomiting dyspepsia dysphagia all these things will be there but in the advanced stages only the patient are going to have the classical sign symptoms of cancer that is weight loss anorexia early satiety anemia hemorrhage all this thing usually this anemia is your iron deficiency anemia and one very important point i would like to tell you any old patient more than 50 or 60 years of age if it is presenting to you with iron deficiency anemia okay then remember it is 100% a case of gastric carcinoma unless it is proved otherwise okay remember this dictum this is a very important dictum okay so before i come into the pathogenesis of your you know gastric carcinoma for those of you who are new okay i am just going to tell you some basic concept okay <clears throat> about any cancer and about certain molecular parts i am going to tell you okay remember any kind of disorder or disease okay can be occurring in two ways it can either be inherited from the family okay in that case it becomes familial familial cancers okay also we call it as germ line we call it as germ line so wherever you are you are coming across the term germ line familial it means that the disease process was inherited from the parents okay and this kind of this type of the disease it is com it is uh, contributing very less these are very rare okay so very less amount of the entire disease spectrum is familial majority of the majority of the tumors or majority of the diseases they are sporadic sporadic means what by chance okay means by chance okay these are sporadic so whenever i am saying sporadic that means the majority of the tumors i am speaking about okay that that is majority of the things that happen is sporadic so any kind of inherited disease so for example any kind of cancer for example breast cancer breast cancer some very very less around uh, 2% 3% breast cancer can be familial whereas 98% of the breast cancer will be sporadic in nature is this point very clear to everyone yes is this yes, point sir. very clear to everyone okay yes sir now one very important thing i am also going to tell you a very base concept that, that i am going to tell you before i go on to explain the pathogenesis because else it will become very difficult for you to understand okay i will give you a basic concept about something now in our body okay in our body we are growing yes young child is growing to form an adult so absolutely we have certain growth pathways that is helping our body to grow yes or no some growth pathways so in our body there are two very important pathways which help in growth and survival one is your map kinase pathway and another one is your pi3k akt pathway yes is this point very clear to everyone one is your map kinase pathway one is your pi3k akt pathway now both these pathways are responsible for growth plus differentiation of our body okay growth and differentiation so normally this growth pathway that we see they are regulated what is the meaning of regulated it means whenever a growth is required only in that particular time that this pathway will be stimulated okay it is not like every time but in case of cancer this regulation is gone and there is unlimited activation of these pathways so the cancer cells just keeps on growing growing and growing understand just remember this part 
Now I will just tell you one more very important concept over here. So normally in our body, we have certain genes called as proto-oncogene. So these are those genes, if they get activated, they are going to increase these pathways. So any kind of mutation in the proto-oncogenes are going to increase this MAP kinase and PI3K AKT pathway. Okay, I'm telling this thing in very general. And normally in our body, we have something called as tumor suppressor gene. The role of tumor suppressor genes is to block cell cycle, is blocks the cell cycle. It doesn't allow the cell to divide. Okay. So this tumor suppressor gene normally puts break on uncontrolled growth in our body. So tumor suppressor gene, like the normal tumor suppressors, like PP53, most important. Another one is RB. Similarly, there are thousands of different types of tumor suppressor gene, like P10 is also one. There are many kinds. So what I wanted to tell you that there are certain genes which works towards causing cancer, that is the proto-oncogene, and there are certain genes which are tumor suppressor gene. I just want you to understand these basic terms so that you understand the molecular pathogenesis of any kind of cancer, starting with the gastric carcinoma over here. Okay. So is this very clear? When I say a familial tumor, what do I mean? When I say a sporadic tumor, what do I mean? When I'm saying, you know, MAP kinase, when, when, when I'm talking about growth and differentiation, you should understand which pathways I'm talking about. You should know what proto-oncogenes are, what tumor suppressor genes are. Okay. Is this clear? Can I move ahead now? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. So if this concept is clear, if you know about this concept, this basic thing is clear. Now this becomes very important. So as the time is going, Okay, we are more interested to know about the familial or sorry, about the molecular pathogenesis. So as the time is going, the molecular pathogenesis becomes very, very important. Okay, okay. Is it clear to everyone? So let us see what are the genetics or what is the molecular genetics of this cancer. So as I told you, there are two types. For example, gastric carcinomas can be familial. Now, the familial variety is a very rare variety. Okay. They are rare varieties. Okay. So, for example, total out of total gastric carcinoma, maybe one to two percent gastric carcinomas might be familial in nature. <coughs> okay. Whereas there are two other kinds that is the diffuse and intestinal type of gastric carcinoma, which are sporadic in nature. Sporadic means which can affect any person and that which occurs by chance that is called as sporadic in nature. Also called as, also we use the term somatic or sporadic. And this we use familial or they are inherited in the germ line. Okay. Is this clear to everyone? So the familial gastric carcinoma is associated with loss of function mutation of one tumor suppressor gene that is called as CDH1. And CDH1 gene is basically encoding a protein product, which is called as e -cadherin. Okay. So try to understand very importantly, there is a loss of function mutation. So there's a loss of function of a tumor suppressor gene that is CDH1. This is a tumor suppressor gene. And the function of this is lost. Now try to understand the normal function of this CDH is to keep. So this, if these are the epithelial cells, okay. For example, normally the epithelial cells are together like this, okay. And they are square and fair like this, okay. They will not be round, okay. So how are they together? There is some protein which is keeping them together. And that protein is your e -cadherin which is basically encoded by the gene CDH1. Okay. And this e cadherin this doesn't allow the cells to go away from each other. And it doesn't allow any cell to, you know, proliferate by its own. But in case, if there is a mutation of the CDH1 gene, the cells are going to become separate from each other. Is it very clear to you? And the cells are going to divide uncontrolled because now nothing is stopping them. Till e cadherin was there, it wasn't allowing this. Okay, so any kind of mutation which is inherited that is in the germ line, okay, causing mutation of the CDH1 leads to an increase, leads to a decreased amount of e cadherin, leading to familial variety of gastric carcinoma. Is this point clear to everyone? Yes, but this loss of function mutation was germ line, that means it was inherited from the parent. Okay, now if we speak about the sporadic tumors. There are also loss of function mutation in CDH1 in diffuse gastric carcinoma, diffuse variety. But this is not inherited from the parent. It happened during the lifetime of that person. For example, that person was having a lot of alcohol 
or the person was having a lot of smoked food which are all risk factors for gastric carcinoma or he was having some chinese food with monosodium glutamate that is msg so the risk became more understand what i am saying so basically loss of function mutation of cdh1 that is again mutation involving cdh1 is present in 50% of sporadic diffuse gastric carcinoma so gastric carcinoma you know they can be of two types one is diffuse one is intestinal okay and the diffuse variety 50% of the diffuse variety they show loss of function mutation of cdh1 now the function of cdh1 can also be gone by other features like hypermethylation or silencing so hypermethylation leads to silencing of this over here mutation is not there this hypermethylation or silencing we call it as epigenetic changes that i will teach you later what it is okay just remember so loss of e coherent expression is the key step in the development of diffuse gastric carcinoma this is a very very important mcq so for diffuse gastric carcinoma the loss of function of cdh or hypermethylation of cdh leading to decreased expression of cdh or decreased e coherent is <coughs> very important in the understanding of diffuse gastric carcinoma is this point crystal clear to everyone yes is it clear okay now as i told you sometimes there is a growth pathway yes in the stomach there is one pathway called as wnt pathway okay this is the pathway which is involved in growth of the stomach okay so normally what happens there is, you know in, along this pathway there is uh, secretion of a particular protein called as beta catenin okay and this beta catenin okay this beta catenin normally is present in the cytoplasm whenever some kind of growth occur then this beta catenin goes inside the nucleus and once it goes inside the nucleus it is going to stimulate the process of transcription so ultimately there will be growth and differentiation this is one of the growth pathways that that, that is the wnt growth pathway now there is a now this pathway is also regulated as i told you any growth pathway normally is regulated and which is the gene which is regulating it it is the apc gene and apc gene is basically one type of tumor suppressor gene okay they are one type of tumor suppressor gene so we have read about one tumor suppressor gene that is the cdh now but in case of intestinal type this apc is involved now let me just explain you in this particular concept that intestinal type of gastric carcinomas are associated with mutations that result in increased wnt signaling so this pathway is increasingly stimulated by this okay now now how is this pathway increasingly stimulated by mutations okay which are inhibiting the apc tumor suppressor gene so there is a loss of function mutation of the apc tumor suppressor gene or for example there might be increased gain of function mutation of beta catenin so for example apc is working normally but beta catenin became more so either there is a loss of function of the apc or there is a gain of function of the gene which is encoding beta catenin and as a result there is an excessive growth and differentiation so is this point understood the pathways and all if is this understood to everyone the basic important pathway in diffuse gastric carcinoma remember it is the loss of function of your uh, cdh whereas in case of intestinal type of gastric carcinoma it is the either loss of function of apc or there is a gain of function mutation involving the beta catenin gene okay so just remember so i have already explained to this particular pathway how it works okay okay now there are other kinds of mutations also which is there which is not that much important for example there is a loss of function mutation involving of the tgf pathway okay or loss of function of the bax gene or loss of function of cdkn2a gene so all these three normally tgf bax and cdkn2 all of them normally they inhibit the growth of cells so loss of function mutation of all these three will lead to an excessive growth of cells okay and patients who are suffering from familial adenomatous polyposis it is basically a polyposis syndrome which we are going to read in the next lecture when we are going to read about the polyps of the intestine along with we will we, we will read about the colorectal carcinomas so there we will understand also so again patients who are familial adenomatous polyposis they have germ line mutation in the apc and these patients are also having an increased risk of intestinal type of gastric carcinoma so long story short what becomes very important yes in both of them that in the sporadic type of gastric carcinoma that we are watching 
Okay, there are two types. The the diffuse variety is mainly having loss of function mutation involving CDH. Okay, this is very important. Whereas over here there is loss of function mutation mainly of APC or gain of function mutation involving beta catenin. Okay, just remember this. Or there is familial in germline also you can have APC mutation which is seen in FAP syndrome. Okay. So gastric carcinomas can occur in in association with other familial syndromes like familial adenoposis colic or HNPCC. Again, another risk factor is blood group A people have an increased risk, which I've already explained. And very important thing is individuals who are having uh, you know mutations in interleukin one beta and interleukin one receptor. Such individuals they are having an elevated risk of gastric carcinoma because of an increased incidence of H. pylori gastritis in such patients. Okay. I know the molecular pathogenesis is a little tough, but you cannot go around it. Molecular pathogenesis will form an important part of your answer. In fact, all the pathogenesis now has become shifted towards molecular. Okay, so I hope this is basically clear to everyone. Now, <clears throat> this was the first thing that is the genetics of the pathogenesis. Now, absolutely, there are certain environmental factors also which is causing gastric carcinoma. Like it is, gastric carcinoma is very common in low socioeconomic groups and in individuals who are suffering from mucosal atrophy and intestinal metaplasia, both of which are features of chronic gastritis or chronic gastritis. Now, the other important risk factor is H. pylori infection. Now, H. pylori infection, very important MCP, it is more commonly associated with the intestinal type of gastric carcinoma. Okay. Now, peptic ulcer disease is associated with a reduced risk of gastric cancer. But remember, patients who have partial gastrectomies for peptic ulcer disease, they have a slightly higher risk of developing cancer in the gastric stump. So what I am telling you over here, that for example, this is the stomach. Okay. If this is the stomach. Okay. Now, for example, what happened? A patient was having peptic ulcer in this part and it was just increasing. It was becoming worse. So what I did, I removed this particular part. Okay. I removed this particular part. Now, as this part was removed, this formed one stump, this formed another stump. So at this gastric stump, at this part, okay, the risk of gastric carcinoma increases. Okay. Increased risk at the stump, at the gastric stump. But remember, peptic ulcer disease by itself, it reduces the risk of gastric carcinoma. Only the risk is going to be increased whenever there is a gastrectomy done for excessive acid secretion. Is it clear to everyone? Yes, this risk factor. The fourth important environmental risk factor is the presence of nitroso compounds and benzopyrene. Now, these are basically used as preservatives in food. Okay. So preservatives in food can increase the risk of gastric carcinoma. Now, now I'm going to tell you something and which is a very important, you know, understanding in a country like India that we are living over here in India, you are going to see that whenever you go to any kind of mall. Okay. You will, see, you will see that any kind of packed foods are there. They are more costly. Yes or no? They are more costly. Yes or no? And even we think that, okay, packed foods is there. So it must be very nice or something will be nice. So, so the packed foods you will see is very costly. And actually people, they don't realize that they are paying money for something bad. Okay. If you go to some country, for example, a first world country like Canada, over there, you are going to see, see in India, it is the opposite. If you buy potatoes, if you buy any food fresh from the market, that is very cheap. But if you buy, you know, packaged food, okay, from mall, they become very expensive. Okay. But in, in countries like Canada or in countries like USA, if you go to any kind of mall, okay, you are going to see all the packaged foods are very less expensive, very less expensive. Okay. Whereas if you go for fresh fruits, or, you know, fresh kind of food, like fresh potato, tomato, vegetables, leaf, salad, all these fresh things, they are highly expensive. You know, they are two to three times the cost of this. Why it is there? Because over there, the public understands the hazards of packaged food. And people, they do not have packaged food very easily. They go for this food only. So just understand that this, this is one paradox that is there between developed country and developing country. So remember, whenever you buy any kind of packaged food, okay, they have some preservatives. So avoid packaged food because they have some preservatives, okay, which basically can increase the risk of gastric carcinoma or any kind of carcinoma in the body. Other thing is smoked and salted food. So you have, have anyone of you have dried fishes? 
yes have you had dried fish some people say it is called as sutki yes that is not good for your health smoked food means all the barbecue all the smoked food the kebabs that you have in the in the coal all of them increases the risk of gastric carcinoma and smoked food is maximally it is uh, taken in in which country yes which is the country having the maximum intake of smoked food smoked fish in fact yes smoked fish it is taken in increased excessive amount in japan and that is the reason japan is the country having the highest incidence of gastric carcinoma okay just remember this japan is having the highest risk of gastric carcinoma okay so these were the environmental factors so we have discussed basically our molecular factors environmental factors responsible for gastric carcinoma then we have host factors that is in us so if you have chronic gastritis or if you are suffering from barrett's esophagus okay so in barrett's esophagus they it, they can induce intestinal metaplasia and that is at, where where the where it is joining the stomach at this point so at the gastric cardia also you can have you know because the intestinal metaplasia might reach the gastric cardia and again they can increase the risk of gastric carcinoma and the gastric cardia other risk factors being menetrius disease and presence of gastric adenoma okay so these are the etiopathology etiopathogenesis okay you have to discuss all these factors in the etiopathogenesis of gastric carcinoma now the difficult part is complete the easy part is there now we are going to discuss the morphology you know just as a comparison between the intestinal versus the diffuse type of gastric carcinoma so here is a basic chart okay so we have i have already made this chart very easy for you all to remember in your exam so in the genetics part you have loss of function mutation in the apc over here whereas over here there is a loss of function mutation or hypermethylation or silencing of the e catherine gene called as cdh1 which is going to cause decreased expression of e catherine okay whereas over here the two most important is loss of function mutation in apc or gain of function where in the beta catenin so i have already explained to you about this other are also there which you might or might not you know uh, you know remember like loss of function mutation of tgf beta bax and cdk n2 a and in fap you have loss of function mutation of apc but it is in the germ line why because it is familial in nature okay so there we already discussed about both of them now coming to the gross feature if you see the for example in case of intestinal type you can see a particular mass can you appreciate a particular mass ulcerative mass is seen so in the intestinal yes, type of adenocarcinoma you are going to see an elevated mass which is having a heaped up border can everyone appreciate this border has been heaped up okay border is going a border is somewhat going like this okay this is called as heaped up margin which is a characteristic of uh, you know uh, ulcer cancer okay and there is a central ulceration if you can see there is a mucosal defect that we can see okay so in the intestinal ulcers if you look at the gross image they are bulky you will see an exophytic mass which might be ulcerative infiltrative lesion with heaped up borders this is what we see in case of uh, intestinal type whereas in the diffuse variety you will not see any this is actually the tumor area okay not only this actually this tumor area is this actually if you see this area is completely flat can you appreciate there is no rugosity there is no rugosity over here present at all no rugosity is there it is completely flat there is no mass which is present over here okay you can appreciate just there is thickening just some area is showing thickening that is it you don't have any particular mass over here just the gastric wall is highly thickened and whatever mucosal folds were there th that is lost and there is no mass at all this is how a diffuse infiltrative type looks like okay so grossly the diffuse infiltrative type they show marked thickening of the gastric wall and there is a partial loss of rugosity there is no mass and because because uh, you know the gastric wall is highly thickened it looks like that of a you know leather bottle or linotus plastica this is a very very important mcq because it becomes very thick it looks like having a leather leathery appearance okay so called as a leather bottle appearance or linotus plastica always remember it is seen in diffuse variety of gastric carcinoma okay now coming to the basic coming to the 
basic uh, uh, you know types microscopic images okay now now you tell me over here this is the first variety that is your intestinal type okay now in this intestinal type what we see that we see that the cells are going in the form of glands yes everyone will appreciate it yes the cells are growing in the form of glands so it will be like the tumor cells are growing in the form of glands okay these are the glands according to which the tumor cells are growing and the tumor cells are growing in a in a area showing excessive amount of fibrosis or we call it as desmoplastic stroma okay desmo plastic stroma that means that area has become very tough and very hard that is the meaning of a desmoplastic stroma is it clear to everyone yes is it clear to everyone yes yes so in case of intestinal type of adenocarcinoma you will see columnar gland forming cells infiltrating through a desmoplastic stroma this is what you see but in case of infiltrative or diffuse infiltrative tumors you are going to see some cells like this the cells are single they are not forming gland and the cells see they have fat over here and inside over here they contain mucin actually so there is no gland formation you will see single cells containing cytoplasm of mucin now remember i told you <coughs> that the cells normally they are of this shape and they are lined like this and they are held together by what is called as e cadherin okay now because of loss of function mutation in the cdh or e cadherin gene these cells become round like this can you appreciate can you appreciate now the cells have become round yes they become signet they become signet shaped they become signet shaped so they are loosely present okay they contain so so the nucleus has been shifted towards the periphery if you can appreciate yes everyone can appreciate this is the nucleus towards the periphery yes this is the nucleus this is the cytoplasm which is containing cytoplasmic mucin vacuoles so this is the basic point of difference between the intestinal variety and your infiltrative variety of gastric carcinoma is this very clear to everyone so if you look at this image in the intestinal variety you have the gland formation in infiltrative desmoplastic stroma whereas over here you can see the cancer has diffusely permeated into the gastric wall as individual cells discohesive cells the cells are not forming gland they are not with each other they are rather present loosely and why they are loosely present over here because of the absence of e cadherin gene remember this is a very very important mcq and the same concept we are going to read in case of lobular carcinoma <coughs> of the breast okay in the in that time also i am going to share the same concept because the molecular changes are the same over there also the cells do not form glands rather they have a nucleus which is pushed to the periphery yes and the cytoplasm is containing in increased amount of mucin vacuoles such that it is giving a signet ring appearance yes it is giving a signet ring cell morphology in case of the diffuse variety so i hope you have understood this part and for your exam remember try reading in this format because there are thousands of things to read in in, in pathology and you should just be able to remember these points and that is why i have given in this particular format okay look at the images try to understand what is present where and lots of mcqs are asked from this portion can you see over here the thickness when the stomach was involved can you appreciate the thickness over here how much it has been thickened over here yes how much the wall has been thickened okay yes sir okay now coming to differentiation between a peptic ulcer disease that that is basically a benign ulcer versus a malignant ulcer so i have already discussed many points if you see over here okay so they have so 95% of these cases are present in the lesser curvature whereas over here they are saying that 90% of the malignant gastric ulcers are present in the greater curvature now margins if you see they are regular margins and they are not heaped up they will come like this the margins are irregular and they are heaped up margins means they are going to come like this now very important the surrounding area is completely normal okay the surrounding area is completely normal in case of benign ulcer whereas the surrounding area will show areas of ulceration of loss of rugosity or showing some nodules nearby areas are not normal in case of malignant gastric ulcer okay 
usually the benign ulcers they are small and they extend up till the the muscle layer whereas they are quite deep and they might be you know uh, they might enter the serosa okay very important thing over here that we have to understand that the base of the ulcer is having granulation tissue in case of benign gastric ulcer whereas the base over here the floor is having necrotic slough okay they have necrotic dead debris okay just remember these points of difference very very important points of difference okay clear to everyone difference between benign and malignant gastric yes. ulcer okay yes sir now depth of invasion now according to the depth of the invasion we can divide the gastric carcinomas into two types one is your early gastric carcinoma another one is your advanced gastric carcinoma so tumor which is involving the mucosa and submucosa irrespective of the lymph node involvement has the best prognosis and they are called as early gastric carcinoma or superficial spreading type whereas advanced gastric carcinoma are those any tumor which is involving beyond the submucosa into the muscle wall so if there is a muscle wall invasion in that situation this is an advanced variety of gastric carcinoma which is having a very poor prognosis now the depth of the invasion and the extent of nodal or distant metastasis remains the most powerful indicator of gastric cancer remember this point okay very important mcq now the five year survival rate of early gastric carcinoma exceeds 90% so 90% of patients with early gastric carcinoma will live more than five years whereas the five year survival rate of advanced gastric carcinoma is less than 20% it means less than 20% of the individuals having advanced gastric carcinoma is are going to survive the overall five year survival is less than 30% is this point crystal clear to everyone yes regarding the five year survival rate and regarding the depth of invasion and the prognosis so the clinical features if we see so the intestinal variety of gastric carcinoma is is uh, predominating in the high risk areas and develops from precursor lesion so there is there are certain precursor lesion for intestinal type that is they arise from flat dysplasia or adenomas the mean age of presentation is 55 years and the male to female ratio is 2 is to 1 in contrast the diffuse variety is relatively uniform across countries so it is not like uh, you know diffuse variety will occur more in one country and less in other country there is no identified precursor lesion for the diffuse gastric variety and prevalence in males and female is same okay now remember there has been a remarkable decrease in the incidence of gastric carcinoma okay just remember okay is just applicable to the intestinal type okay the diffuse type has not shown any decrease in incidence and remember gastric carcinoma is usually present with metastasis at the time of diagnosis okay so sometimes metastasis will be present at the level of supraclavicular sentinel lymph node which is called as virchow's node sometimes they might be present at the level of the umbilicus in which case those metastatic nodes are called as sister mary joseph nodule and sometimes bilateral ovarian metastasis occurs okay that is basically we call it as krukenberg tumor so now i am going to show you three images now you tell me which of them is which yes where is the tumor where where is the met metastasis this is the carcinoma supraclavicular so what is this called as virchow's node so remember Virtues. these are important mcqs aims different exams neat they just give you this diagram they will give you a short history so you have to correlate looking at this picture clear to everyone okay what is this there is a peri umbilical lesion is there yes so this is a case of joseph a sister man. mary joseph nodule yes, okay and this is this is what what is this crocan virus uterus this is a uterus this is a cervix okay and can you see the bilateral so it should be a bilateral ovarian Very. metastasis and remember remember this bilateral metastasis is mainly of the diffuse gastric type that is they are signet ring cells okay they are forming the bilateral tumor which is called as krukenberg tumor okay so is this concept very clear to everyone yes all the features have been discussed the clinical features the depth of invasion all the different bit between the benign and malignant gastric ulcers then what are the features and how to differentiate between the intestinal and diffuse variety in terms of clinical features in terms of microscopic gross and genetic information yes what are the risk factors host factors environmental factors pathogenesis in details sir please tell the uh, environmental factors a uh, point